Hey crafty family, it is me and today we are going to do some watercolor painting. Isn't that pretty? I actually made this. Can you believe it? I made a card. I've made a couple cards recently. I'm trying to practice because practice makes perfect. And I think I did a pretty damn good job on this. And I am going to show you, but not on a card. We're not going to make a card. We're actually going to make a tag because I already made a card, so, and since we're doing um, a, um, yeah, a tag challenge in the Pink Poodle Pack Creative Playground Facebook group, we are going to do some of these flowers on a card, or no, a tag. <laughs> How many times am I going to screw that up? So, I seen this, this, those flowers on, oh crap. I'll link the video below where I seen the flowers because now I forget. Good for me, right? I forget the name of the YouTuber that did them and so. And you need something like a piece of uh, board or something to tape it to because you're going to be dripping so you're going to have to hold it up a little bit which hopefully you'll be able to see. I'm not sure how well that's going to work out but we are going to give it a try and of course I've got a mess all over my desk with things in the way of me getting that done which I should have taken care of prior to doing this video um okay so I'm trying to figure this out so where's my tape there it is so I'm going to tape the back of this just so it stays in place like so so that's what you want to do whether you're doing it on watercolor paper or a tag on regular watercolor paper like sized for a card you want to do this the first thing you're going to do is use a brush and I'm using a number eight um, watercolor brush and I have my watercolors. Hopefully, I'm not sure if you could see them over here. Not really, because I'm trying to make it so that you can see, be zoomed in. So I've got the um, Kiritake, whatever these are called. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is make the flowers. I'm going to hold everything, try to get everything as close as I can so that this doesn't get messed up. So you're gonna take some water and you're gonna make like little, like let's start with the first flower over here and you're gonna make like little, kind of like little U-shaped thingies and then you're going to make a thin line all the way to the bottom and then whatever color you wanna use, you're going to then drip it into where your little u-shape was and you see how it starts to run down that's when you tip it and then you can add a little more water and it'll keep going all the way down sometimes you got to help it down but you want to keep letting that water Keep dipping it into the water and letting it drip and try to get it to drip on its own because it kind of will end up working better if you can. Okay, so then I'm going to switch colors. And we'll go with this color here. Oh crap, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I meant to do green, not red. I don't know why I did that. That was stupid. Anyway, can fix that. I was thinking of the flowers already and we haven't done the flowers yet. Okay, so let me put a little yellow back in there. It can be fixed. Okay. Alright, then I'm going to put green. I don't know why I was going for that color, but apparently I was ahead of myself. I'm going to drip some green in there and get it to go down the stem. And in order to do that, you want to, again, tip your board, grab some more water, and just keep running it until it goes all the way to the bottom. And it might drip off. Just wipe it. 
and sometimes it'll make like a little bead at the bottom if you clean off your brush and and uh, dab it off dab off the liquid you can you can absorb some of it so that's what you should have basically kind of a two-toned and you can do whatever colors you want but I'm doing it like green stems and I like to do all the stems first so that's what I'm going to do at different sizes I'm going to do the stems and you could start off with the yellow start off with the green but basically you're going to let it do the work it's better if you when you pull it out of the water you see how there's beads of water up on the metal and the wood well if you go to drip it down what's going to happen is these drips are going to end up on your Thing. So I, you could wipe your brush off completely and then just dip it into the water and dip the bristles into the water so that you don't have a disaster going on. Do you know what I mean? Like wipe all the water off first and then just dip the bristles in. See, like I'm dipping it in the water and I'm going to wipe the whole brush off and then just go back in and dip the bristle part into the water so that there's no disasters. Let's do one way up here. Tipping it. I find this to be very relaxing and a lot of fun. I'm sorry, I have to move this around quite a bit. I think what I'm going to do now that you kind of get the hang of what I'm doing here, I keep dipping it in water to get it to run. Because one drop of water, one good drop of water will get it to run. And again, if you get a little bulb at the bottom, you can pat your brush off dry and then just absorb it and it's fine. So I'm going to fast forward through making the rest of these because I don't think you need to watch every single one. got a mess that I'm cleaning up 
It would help if my water was a bit cleaner than it is, but it's not, so. If you ever have a mess, you just put a little water on it and dab it, and it should help it a little bit. You're never going to get perfection because it's watercolor, but, um, yeah, so this is what your stem should look like. You drip the yellow first, then you drip in some green. If you end up dripping in too much green, you just drip in some clear water and then add some more yellow and just keep going like that. And sometimes you get these little bulbous things here, which look like, you know, they give a more organic look. It's not supposed to be a perfect stem. You know, you just do the best you can to make it look sort of like a stem. Um, to me, these flowers end up looking kind of like carnations that aren't fully open or carnations from a side view, kind of. That's what they look like to me anyway. Um, so, and I mostly use red and orange with these and they turn out real pretty. So you don't need it to be taped down for this part because you're not, oh, why did I, why does this keep happening to me? Am I like, seriously? Is this going to happen because I'm filming? Is that why? <laughs> Seriously, why else would it happen? Anyway, because I've got paint on my thing and I get it up. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. It's just the bottom. Who cares? Anywho. So anyway, so your next step now is going to be your flowers. And basically, you're going to take water again and you are going to make little little like circle-y irregular kind of circle bumps on the top of your stem bumps <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever I'll show you what I mean you'll see what I just did when I add the color so I'll start with a lighter color and I'll do the orange and I'll put the orange now there's a lot of liquid there so what I might do is go back in and soak a little bit of it up with my brush. I'm di dabbing it off and then soaking. And then I could go in with a wet brush and some of the darker color that I want to use and put it in and move it around where I want it. And it ends up looking pretty cool. That's the kind of flowers we're making. It looks kind of more like a little bud. And you can like, what you can do is you can extend it out like this by moving the paint or putting a little more on your brush. And for instance, like I can take some yellow and help. You can move it and make it a little bit bigger. So you can also do that to make it look more like a carnation-y looking. So you could do that on some of them. I like to do that on some of them and then keep others like small, like they're buds. So that to me is what they look like. I don't know if they are, but to me they kind of look carnation-y looking. So you can, you know, whether they do for you, I don't know. I don't know. So again, I'm gonna wipe off my whole brush and then just put the tip in for some water. And then I'm going to draw my next. I usually start with the high ones and then go lower. And now I'll put my color. I'll go with some yellow. And then... We'll go with some red. And I kind of leave it at start to marble and I might go back in and add more color, but I let usually uh, the two colors marble and then I go back in later. I'll start with orange. Orange, reds, and yellows seem to look, in my opinion, the best. But then again, you know, you might not think so. And you might want to use blues and purples and greens. I mean, who knows? It's kind of up to you. 
see there's too much water there so it's not really letting me drop any more color in so I'm going to go back in after I dabbed off my brush and dab out some of that water and now I'll go in with the other color and it kind of helps to let me add that color in like so and then you can go in and even add more color you can I would wait to add a third color until after the first two kind of dry a bit makes it a little easier fun and easy flower that winds up looking really cool when it's done um, it actually looks like you know what you're doing which is you know in my world that's pretty shocking because I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> So I'm like, cool, a flower I can do that makes it look like, it actually looks like a flower. And it looks like I know what I'm doing. Now I'm doing this all with the same brush, but if you have, like, you know, if you find that using a couple different brushes help, um, by all means, use a couple different brushes. I think this is a great beginner flower. For those like me who don't know how to watercolor but want to try so okay so it looks like I did pretty good there I'm just gonna be careful not to tip it too much because some of them are very wet I might actually absorb some of the water out of this one and now I'm gonna take the dryer to it a little bit and if I need to go back in and add some more color, that's when you can't. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more color to this one because it's got enough water where it should. Alright, now I'm going to dry it and we'll see what we get. Now they're just about dry, but I noticed a couple of them could use a little extra color maybe a little extra yellow or a little extra something that got you know pushed out of the way maybe too much of the yellow got pushed out so you can go back in at this time when they're just about dry and add in any lost colors So like right here, I wouldn't mind there being a little more yellow. It just gives it a little more depth if you have couple of different colors going on
Okay, dry that. Okay. Now oh, that's hot. I got green on the back. Now, once it's dry, you could choose to leave it like this, or you can make a border for it with a corresponding color, which would look cute. Like, for instance, I have this red, and it might be cute to make the tag um, framed out with that, kind of like I did the card, you know? Let me move this because it's a little wet. So, uh, what did I get on this? Is there something on the back that's wet? Let me dry that. Because now, I screwed up my tag because either which way I do it, it's going to show. <laughs> but that's alright because I can flip it over. Annoying. When things get messed up. Okay, so what we're going to do is mark it off where I'm going to cut it. I'm going to move this out the way. Get my cutter. And this will just give the tag a little more substance. And now you could pop it up if you want. I'm not going to pop it up. I did on the card, but I'm not going to do it on this. I am going to try to find my tape. Uh, Double-sided tape. Wherever did you go? Huh. Oh, for crying out loud. Are you kidding? It's completely lost. Great. Luckily, I've got this sitting here. Let me make sure this is dry before I flip it over. Okay. And then we'll cut the little edges of it after we get it on the red piece. So this is a an idea for a tag that you can make because you could bang out a couple of these fairly easily they don't take a lot of time and you know these can be part of your challenge tags I'm gonna have to put my big head in the way and then you can just follow the Follow the little thingamabobbers here to cut those and then punch your hole in the center and you're good to go. And then you could just add your string and voila. And voila, there you go. Then you have this cute little handmade, hand-painted watercolor flower tag. Cute, right? So, and if you do make a tag, make sure you sign the back, date the back, so that whoever you're giving it to will have your signature on the back and know and remember that it's from you. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you'll give it a try because it's real pretty. The flowers are simple to make. And it doesn't take a lot of fuss, but it'll look like it's professionally done and it'll look fancy schmancy and anybody would be proud and happy to have one of these. So it's not too late to join our challenge if you're not in the Pink Poodle Pack Creative Playground. The link will be in the description below. Join our group and then you can get involved in our challenge, which is a lot of fun. We give out a small prize um, after the challenge is over. So. So yeah, it's worth it to come and give it a try.
and this month we're doing three tags that we send out randomly to people in the group. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did and also share it on your social media. I would really appreciate it. It helps my channel out, which helps me out. So I would really appreciate it. And also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, if you're one of those people that feel like subscribing is gonna give you all kinds of spam mail and all that stuff in your inbox, it doesn't. The only way you get any email from me or from my channel by subscribing is if you click the bell icon next to the subscribe button and even then you'll just get an email when I have a either live stream or a new video um, and it would be great if you did that because then you get notifications and you'll know exactly when I go live so you don't miss anything because I do do live streams twice a week so hit subscribe don't be afraid and um, yeah enjoy my channel if you're new to it because we have a lot of fun here and also in the link or uh, in the description below there are some links obviously one is to my Facebook group and the other one down there will be to my patreon where we have um, certain uh, Patreon benefits that are only for my patrons, like a secret Facebook group where we do all kinds of swaps and fun things and games and giveaways, and also to live classes. And so those things are to thank my patrons who support my channel. So make sure you check that out as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up like I said and um, I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. Love you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.